Boom. Dude, this DCI season is, I think, incredible so far from a percussion standpoint. I've never seen this many groups come out of the gate swinging like they did the first couple weeks out of June. Usually you have one or two that come out that are just like, yep, those guys are going to be really good by August. But this year it's been like five or six groups I can think of that came out of the gate like, is it July? Is it like the middle of July? Nope, June 20-something. True. I think the most impressive part to me about it is the, I don't want to say weaker groups, but like what you would consider like maybe the lower tier world-class groups just on recent finish of last year, like the groups that didn't finish like in the top 12. Like if you look at those groups that are 12 to 17 to 20, they're all drumming really well. It's really solid. And I was pretty impressed with a, a few of them that we'll get into here in a little bit. But I think that the bottom half of the activity is rising up, which is what's making the kind of the activity in itself flourish and kind of strengthen and bolster itself. I think that might go back to what we talked about last week about just WGI getting bigger and bigger, keeping more and more kids drumming year round. Oh, definitely. Just further, further um, results of that, I think. But so today I kind of just want to talk about all the individual groups we've watched so far. We've yeah. seen a couple things live, not a whole lot yet, but we will soon. There's a show in Kentucky next Saturday that I think five or six handful of groups are going to be at. I'm going. You are too, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. there. So we'll get to see groups live there, but we've been watching a lot of videos, and I think it'd be good. We're going to just go down in order that the core overall finished in, at finals last year and just talk about what they're doing and what we think about it and where we think they might be at the end of the season. So yeah. let's just start with the Blue Coats. Uh, blue coats, so obviously one last year. I think what the great thing is too about like the internet these days is all the people, the videos that people post are in like 720 or 1080p. Oh, the quality. So like 10 years ago, you're watching videos, you're like, oh, I can't really tell if that was good or not. It's like now it's like the videos don't really lie that much. It's like being right in front of them. There's some YouTube channels that are taking 4K videos. That's yeah. That's like, and when there's 4K, beautiful. it's like you're it's like you're looking out your backyard into your backyard through a window and they're right there. The videos look better than my eyes work. But <laughs> but yeah, Blue Coats, uh, Blue Coats are playing a extremely hard book, in my opinion. I don't think that they have come out as clean as other groups have, but I think that's because of the challenges in the book itself. Like The difficulty is very high. And I think early season, especially for DCI, you do get rewarded for that. Like, for what you're trying to do isn't as important right now. Or what you're trying to do at the beginning of the season is just as or more important as being clean to where towards the back half it starts to lean more towards like, all right, doesn't matter as much what you're doing if it's not clean. If it is clean, then what you're doing can separate you. But I think that the, the arranging in the book that they have is definitely super challenging. It's too hard. It's too hard. That's my opinion. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's too much. Like there, I respect, I respect them for having the balls to try to do what they're doing, but I think it's too hard. I thought last year's book was too hard. I thought they achieved, they achieved last year's book pretty well considering, but they could have been based on the guys and what I've heard for the grapevine of who was in that group. I think they could have been phenomenal if they would have dialed the book back a little bit. They were good. Don't get me wrong. They finished second oh, in the were, round, yeah, so they, they really obviously good. weren't bad. They probably would have won if they had made some things easier. Got the fire hose out yeah. down the stretch and kind of made things more t obtainable. So they won overall, yeah, but they probably would have won a drum trophy. And Blue Coats have been so close to that drum trophy like four different times. Like 07, they were close. They got second. 12, we were close. Uh, 15, they were close. They got second. Last year, they were close. Like, Just haven't made did it over BD the hump beat, yet. Did BD win drums all four of those years? I know 12, they did. Yes. 15, they did. They wanted, BD also Six, won in 07. Who That's won drums funny. last year? Uh, last year, it was Vanguard. Vanguard. So, three out of the four times, the, the four. Blue Coats have been in contention for a drum trophy and gotten as close as they've gotten. The Blue Devils have been the ones that have beat them. A couple of those other years, they probably should have won, in my opinion. <laughs> But last year it was not 
one of them. No, they, they just weren't as clean as some of the other groups. The, it was just so hard that it never really allowed them to be, I think, truly consistent. Yes. And, I, and I'm worried about this year, too. Like, the book is it's probably harder this year than it was last year. It looks like it. Initially. And if they can make it clean and consistent, man, good for them for, like you said, having the cajones to throw it out there and throw it down. But I, it, it's going to be a challenge. We'll see if they can pull it off, but... The only thing I don't like about, I guess, the setup, and this is just a personal opinion, which everything on this podcast is, is their front ensemble setup. Like, if, for me, if I was judging it, it would be super difficult to judge their front ensemble. Cause Are they in a bunch of pods? Yeah, they're so spread out. Like, the, the marimbas, I think the closest they are together is 15 yards. So, like, from one to the next nearest pod, it's 15 yards apart. And then I think from, like, end player to end player in the marimba line, it's, like, close to 60 yards. How does that even work? Well, they use in-ear monitors. To play together? Yeah. So they That's hear... allowed? Yeah, you can do it now. Huh. So, like, they have, obviously, the, the microphones under the keyboards that are picking up the sound that are going through the system to project to the audience, but also it's going to wireless in-ear monitors so they can hear each other. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it, and it's challenging. Cool, it's super challenging in and of itself. If one of those electronic things malfunctions, like your show is completely shot. Yeah, somebody forgets to charge the battery on the wireless ear monitor, and you're like, "Get there, and we can't hear each other." <laughs> oh, jeez. Good luck then. But yeah. So next up, I guess we would have Blue Devils rocking yeah. the sixteen or eighteen snares. <laughs> Why? Why do they always do stuff like this? I don't <sighs> they're so good at what they do and they're so they're so talented like the players are so talented but they could do so much more with the talent they have every year their book is not my cup of tea it's definitely like its own thing and like if you blindfolded somebody and just listen to a video you'd be like that's a bd book i can tell oh you, I know, you it is. know within 30 seconds of listening to drum music whether it's blue devils or not because they're gonna play very aggressive like vertical double stop licks and then like just have like some crazy 10 measures lick that no one else can play and then go back to like the same i mean you and i were watching a bd video from like the first week it might have been one of the first videos that went up on youtube and and i remember looking at you and just saying i don't they can't be having fun playing this i bet they're having fun when they win <laughs> uh, winning is definitely fun winning is definitely fun but like it just doesn't seem like it's a if I was in that group and I looked at what other lines were playing that same summer, I'd be like, Yeah, we're really good, but that sounds awesome. I, I've never been a fan and I why does Scott Johnson not write their book? I think he writes some of it, but doesn't write. Isn't all it the of it. Warner Ranger that writes the skeleton at least, or like basically and then obviously I think Scott so. would have li- I am... Liberty? Pretty sure that's. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. David Glide, I think, is Dave Glide. Maybe I, I'm not 100 percent on that, but I think he writes the skeleton and then Scott Johnson fills it in. I'm pretty sure, especially with like the segments, the sectional features and stuff. Wanna, but I've never been drawn to that. I guess that style. Like I never was like I want to march BD. Like if I had the option, I think I would have like gone other places. And I get why guys want to go there because you have a shot at a drum trophy every year. Because they're always super talented, they're always very good. And don't get me wrong, just because I say the writing of their music is not my cup of tea, doesn't mean I don't respect what they do. Oh no, I think like, if you're a tenor have... player, that's the mecca. Oh, for, for, for quad playing, that's where <laughs> everyone should want to go. Their quad line is the best quad line in DCI just about every summer. They look like aliens when they play, I don't even under, understand how their hands move that way. I don't either. Quad don't... drumming elu- is beyond my my scope of talents we'll have to have (laughs) dean hickman on here at some point and have him enlighten us about how that works because yeah for quad playing for sure that's where you would want to go they're phenomenal every year and their snare line's always good and so is the bass line but just the notes themselves i've never been a super super fan of but can we talk about their uniforms for a second yeah uh (laughs) there's quite a uh an interesting trend going on with the dci uniforms thanks to uh a very successful Blue Coats championship, I the think. Blue Boats. Yeah, I think a lot of people are adopting thematic uniforms that go with their show themes. And that's fine, but I think people just went really, really far with it. Yeah, I don't like it. I 
And I think I, the reason I don't like it is because the capability of messing it up and getting a dumb uniform is so high. Oh, like, yeah. with the traditional marching band uniform, like, yeah, you kind of had this certain look or image to it, and each group had their kind of core identity and core colors. And, yeah, some groups maybe have better color schemes to work with than others, but for the most part, everybody kind of looks very uniform and similar, and it's like, yeah, it's a cool thing. It, everybody looks super together and clean and cut and now with the indoor style uniforms and outdoor it's like basically the same approach when i look at indoor groups like you either are going to have a cool uniform or you're not and the groups the number of groups that have not in my opinion great indoor uniforms is higher than the ones that do oh yeah and so now that's how it is in the outdoor game too like the groups that i think have cool uniforms is very minimal yeah, uh, agreed. compared to the ones that I think I'm like, eh, I don't know if that's the best design for that I would enjoy wearing as a member myself. No, I wouldn't. I think I the picture I saw of BD's uniforms this year, it was a I think a picture of one of their snare drummers. It's like purple and pink and sequins all over it, and like, yeah, because I think their show is like Metamorphosis or Metamorph or something. So I don't know if that's like. I guess that kind of makes sense, but like, I wouldn't want to wear that. I wouldn't want to wear that. It's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, like, it looks bold like a color statement. guard. It's it a looks bold. like a color guard uniform. It really does. Which, it really does. I don't know. I mean, I'm not offended by color guard uniforms. No, I'm not either. So, like, I guess at the same time, like, well, what makes me, if I don't, if I don't mind the color guard uniforms, then why do I mind? But I guess I just kind of view the color guard as, like, a different thing then, where they're well, very you view it thematic. that way, I think, because the color guard was, has always been that, like you just said, very thematic thing that you could had liberty with their uniforms and what they were doing to really complement the show theme. Yeah. And now you have that across the entire group, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you have to get it right. Yeah. You have to get it right. I think that the thematic uniforms fit in with trying to make your show one integrated production. And that makes sense. But at the same time, you like sacrifice a little bit kind of, like you said the other day like identity like a lot of groups don't really have like their identity anymore like you see bd and they have their uniform you see the cabbies have the uniform the cadets have always had the cadets uniform and like so people kind of had that identity so that's being sacrificed a little bit if i hadn't watched any videos or seen any photographs and i went to a drum corps show i would have no clue who was walking anywhere in the lot or warming up anywhere i'd be like i don't know who that is what yeah what are those i don't I don't know who, who's who. Yeah, exactly. There's no... I don't know. Still up in the air whether it's a good thing or a bad thing to me. Just a super hypothetical. What if they did that, like with the current uniforms, and they did not announce shows, like groups' names before their performances, and the judges had no clue what order it was going on in? That would be interesting. It'd be cool, but that would only work for the first few shows, because then eventually the judges would Eventually know. they would see, yeah. After, after, after the first week of tour, the judges would... Definitely know, like, oh, that's the Blue Devils. That's the Cadets. Yeah, but it'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> like, the first few weeks. Don't let anyone know and see where they end up placing people. Performing their show, blah, whatever blah, blah, title, blah. you may take the field. <laughs> that would be actually kind of cool. Because then you would get to see, like, where the judges would put people, irrelevant of what the name on the show is. It, like, the name, the of, the name of the group. That's what group, I meant. Yeah. That's, that's what I meant. They would have no clue. It would only work for that first week. But then you would get to see if it would get to change. Once they knew who was who, if things readjusted to the way... Yeah, man. And obviously there would be this typical separation. You have like the tier one of the top 12, which is the top six to eight that are all very, very good or whatever. And then you have the second half of the top 12. I feel like the groups that are in those tiers typically would still be within that tier if you did that because the talent levels are different. The Just the abilities of the members is different typically. But... Within those sub tiers, mm-hmm. you would see, I think, surprising movement because I've always thought there's favoritism in DCI judging, and it's it's political. People judges can tend to look past. Oh, I must have been out of position for that for that role or something, or I must have been out of position to hear that well or whatever. Yeah, when they're judging certain groups versus others. Oh yeah, I don't know. All right, so getting back to what we were talking about, so so BD, they're. Uh, they're playing really well. Yeah, they're that that segment the beginning of the, it's the beginning of the show, right? When they're all playing snare drum. Yeah, 
It like starts the show, doesn't it? Yeah, they start the show. It's like an add in, uh, and then they break off in like smaller pods and play the little things, and then they do like an eight and eight split where they play like a lick, and they actually do it for a decent amount of time up there. It is pretty good, like considering you got quad players and bass drummers that aren't tr- don't play traditional grip playing traditional grip. Um, and it's pretty good. You think that was a requirement for the audition to take people this year? No, I no, think they, just they just said, "All right, them. we're going to teach you during spring training how to play," or told them after they made it, "Start working on your traditional grip." Yeah, it's like get to the March camp. Like, all right, by the time you get to move ins, you better be able to at least hold sticks the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who knows? So moving on to Crown, the home team. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think they're one of the best three right now. They have definitely come out very with a very high clarity from the battery. Yes. Um, man, I am excited for the things that are going on there. I think they're headed in the right direction. Well, the drumline, obviously, when I was there, we finished second, and then I think four, fourth my second year. But over the last few years, like 13, 14 15 they were kind of like sitting in that like six to five six seven range Mm -hmm. so i think now it's kind of getting a little more fresh i I like the book a lot better this year it's an old school book uh yeah it is old school it reminds me of older like 90s early 2000s music they also have dudes there that i think are doing fresh stuff with like the teaching and stuff Mm -hmm. and the approach um they're playing really well they're probably the in my mind they're probably the cleanest drum line right now might be i think denver cadets are them or Cadets, yeah. I would agree with that. Um, but, yeah, they're the book's super old school. Hannum wrote it, right? Hannum, like the majority I think, of it? yeah, he either wrote all of it or, like, 90% of it or something. So Hannum's technically the caption head, right? Uh, yes. And then and a ranger. And then I, I can't remember who's doing the front ensemble arranging. I don't know who that is either. But then our friend Travis Peterman is the... Caption supervisor? Is that like his battery t- coordinator or something like that? I think like Dan Shack is the battery coordinator. Okay. Dan told me that when they were in Kentucky for a day. Whatever the title is, it's like Tom Hannum, Travis, Travis Peterman, and then like the head pick Dan guy Frankie and, Dan and all them working the techs and uh, Sean Mack and uh, Andrew Rubano and all them. And there are those all those guys are East Coast guys, so that's <laughs> kind of why their roots play well, I think, with Hannum writing. Yeah. And, like, they brought back, uh, is it Ice Cream Floats they're playing? Or is it, there's some some exercise they played that, when I was there for the day, and I can't remember the name of it. It's a very old exercise, though, an old East Coast flam exercise. I don't know, but I love Ice Cream Floats. It's a good exercise. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so they're very good. I think they're one of the top three right now. Um, then Vanguard would be next. We mentioned it last weekend. They Paul, always come out banging. Paul Rennick. Just has it figured out. He's a machine. They're a machine. They just now, come out, and you almost know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, the writing style is obviously similar because he's writing it, but like you know they have that Vanguard sound. They're going to come out and do these like hocket parts, like trade-offs between snares, tenor, and bass, mm-hmm. and they're going to play super clean and super dynamically. <laughs> what I will say, though, is they were one of the first groups I saw videos of in the first week of tour, and they were playing phenomenal in them. But I saw some recent videos from like this past week and it might have been just adrenaline from the beginning of tour because I feel like the more recent videos I've seen haven't been as as good as the ones they and you can have off nights yeah you and I both the tour it's a long tour I try to take a lot of the videos like with as much of a grain of salt I mean sometimes you can tell like obviously there's a difference between video quality and audio quality but sometimes but most of the time you can still tell, like, oh, that just wasn't in, or that, was, that yeah, wasn't that in there. Yeah. That didn't hit. Um, but, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, like, that video or two that I saw from those two nights, like, some dude might have had a stomach ache. Some guy might have not gotten a lot of sleep the night before. Or somebody, you know, all his that, hands just felt terrible that day. Because that happens. <laughs> it does. You don't, like, when you have drummed for spring training for 30-some days and beat the crap out of your hands and forearms and wrists and and you get no time for your muscles to rebuild themselves, by about July, my hands felt awful until about noon or 1 o'clock in the afternoon every day by about the middle of July or early July. They just felt terrible. To hit the drum with them, they just, because you, you just constantly beat, beat them down and beat them down and build that endurance-type runner's muscle. And so that's why you have to kind of take 
with a grain of salt when you see a lot of videos like that are different from day to day because like that could have just been a bad three days like yeah. I, well, I woke up one day on tour at blue stars and there we had a drum feature in our second movement i just couldn't play anymore nothing changed there was a part that i would break at every time so, luckily it was a rehearsal day but no that was a sh- i broke at that part in the show that night that was the one time i broke in the show all summer and i remember tra- i was standing next to travis peterman and he all day in rehearsal we wrapped that chunk a bunch i could not play that one bar of it i would get to it and my hands would freeze up every time and i kept on breaks like trying to play it a bunch and travis walked over the dude just stop yeah your brain has a mental block for it stop trying to beat it yep if you break into the show tonight whatever just move past it just and i up. i broke in the show last that night i knew it was coming my hands just locked up again and maybe it was a mental thing who knows woke up oh, it's completely show. mental you know you can play oh i know i can play it i played it all spring training but then I woke up the next morning, no problem the rest of the summer with it. It was just back. It's just a weird thing. It happens. It's just a long tour. Just, it's just. But yeah, so the, I, I try to find videos like week to week and not like day to day, like you said. Like, yeah. yeah. Who, like who's, what was it like t- two weeks ago versus the current day? And you kind of use that a little bit better at a basis because a week in drum corps time is like long time. a long time. It's like That's dog, a lot of dog years. It's <laughs> a lot of rehearsal hours that happen in a week. All right, after Vanguard last year were Cavies. Cavies, Cavaliers. Dude. They won the premiere in Indy yeah. in drums, but... I'm not sold yet. I'm not either. I'm I've not seen sold. some videos where there's segments of the video where they're throwing down certain phrases, and then they'll get to like the very next phrase. It's almost like they spent all their spring training time on select hard phrases, and the rest of it just didn't get worked on, or... Maybe the exposed moments and stuff, because... Well, that's actually super smart, too, if you think about it. Because the way DCI is now, I don't think to date they've had on-field judges yet. So It's only July 8th. I think they start next week. Next week, maybe. Next week, uh, maybe. Having on-field judges where they're in there. So if you are, by design, working on your exposed moments and cleaning those and just kind of buying yourself time to clean the other stuff until judges get out there, you can hide a lot of dirt with a judge only being in the box. Mm-hmm. Um and also what I think is helping them, too, is I, I haven't seen many videos of their front, but generally, most years, they have a really good pit. Yes. So if somebody's judging from the front and only the front and not on the field, and you hear really good exposed moments from the battery, you're not going to hear those dirty moments that aren't exposed from the drum line, and you're also hearing good pit clarity, then you're like, I could see how like they're doing really well, but I'm not completely sold on on them yet, and... Mm-hmm. They're they're definitely leading the charge in most splits played by the snare line. Oh and, my god, I want to talk about line. that. <laughs> and that's driving me crazy. When did that start? When did that when when did it become a thing for that to be cool? Because even if say you have a snare line split thirty second notes down it or whatever, it's going to expose any inconsistency in the tuning from drum to drum. So if you even if they do play it rhythmically perfect. If the drums aren't tuned identically, it still sounds bad. Yeah, I don't know if like you're just going for the the split sound, but it sounds it sounds stupid to me no matter who does it or how well they do it because first of all, none of those drums are going to stay in tune. Like if you tuned them all perfectly to begin with, like they're exactly the same. Mm-hmm. By the time nine different players or eight different snare drummers start playing on it with different strength pressure velocity they're all going to detune differently anyway yeah add in the fact that every single one of those dudes have a different pair of sticks and a different weight of hands and they're going to play that down the line you're just like it doesn't sound good i've never seen i've never heard a group sound good doing that like yeah bases split and sound great because they all have different pitches and even quads like if they do a split and it's like on different drums like you can't really notice Snare split, snare splits are killing. Me. I don't even like the quad split. I, yeah, I don't either, but I I can at least tolerate it. Cause yeah, because you, the different tones, the, it you have different pitches and stuff. But if they do it all on the same drums as the quads, and same thing, same thing applies. It sounds terrible. I don't I don't know where did that start. Like I know when did you start indoor. seeing groups? I know indoors where indoor it, where started, it started. I, feel like. I know Tim Jackson wrote some quad splits in 2012 for that quad line at Rhythm X, but. When did you start seeing it in DCI? I don't know. And I don't even think it's necessarily to 
like some quad splits are cool and some like snare stuff where you have like an a b type thing like one person's doing one thing like blue coats do a lot of that with their snares where it's mm-hmm. kind of like a groove and like the quads may have done that but like this like down the line split or like, like split rolls or split singles baseline and, style yeah splits. baseline style splits i'm that it, it drives me crazy to no end yeah not a fan and, yeah i just i don't know and that's nothing obviously on the uh the performers that's just like an arranging it's a preference it's a or design thing an arranging not preference <laughs> no so yeah with the cavies i've heard them play some stuff that has been perfect and i've heard them play some so they're just i think they're just kind of inconsistent right now maybe as a battery i think a lot of people are but well, I mean, it's july 8th where yeah. we're recording this so of course no one's going to be perfect yet um, but I think that things will definitely shake up when people get out on the field judging. It always does. Yeah, it always does. Um, so yeah, moving on, we have next the cadets, one of my favorites for this season. Um, I think those dudes are throwing down right now. Dude, they're going for it. It's so aggressive. <laughs> yeah, Tom, Tom Monks is back. Yeah, back, He's back, man, back on the cadets team, and I love it. He's, I think stretching himself in a great direction too as like an arranger because some of the stuff that they're playing i'm like man that doesn't seem like traditional tom ox and i love it like yeah. it's mixed in with yep. like his style and i think it's dope like yeah it's their book is really really cool but it's it's definitely a dense book it's extremely dense i mean it's it's that tom ox style of density of notes fast aggressive writing um but like you said he i think has, it has more flair now he has sprinkled in some of this new age new school there's like hybrid rudiments and yeah, stuff and there's more of that stuff going on that just makes it super interesting and they're playing really well like yes. i think that those guys are, the approach there that they're playing with is one of my favorite of the summer so far at and we can talk about this more too, like as a uniformity of technique, like the way that they are all playing technique and just the velocity and the relaxation. I think it's... Who it, plays harder, Blue Coats or Cadets this summer? Who? Blue Coats. Blue Coats play more harsh to me than Cadets. And when do. I say harder, I don't mean harder music. No. I mean they like hit the drum harsh, harder. I never quality. thought I would see the day where a Blue Coats drum line hits their drums harder than the cadets drum line. I think did. blue coats play more harsh than cadets do this summer. Yeah. I would agree with that. Just, just the approach to the drum. I think it's... But I'm on board They're They're definitely one of my, that I'm excited to see live and check out. I haven't seen them in person yet, but I haven't either, but I've heard good things from people that have. Yeah. And then I've seen a bunch of videos. All right. Next we have the blue Knights. that funkiness going swag out. central, man. Yeah. They are swagging. They and sell I, that like crazy. I love their vibe, the vibe they have. I don't think that they've come out as strong this year as they have the last two. Um, I can agree with that. I think there's a little bit more of a gray right now with comparing them early season this year to early season last year, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe that's partly, too, because the notes are harder, the beats are harder, who knows. But just... From a year-to-year comparison, I still like what they're doing. I think that Mike Jackson's writing is super creative, and it's innovative, and it's He's refreshing the mo- for the activity. We talked about this last week a little bit, too. His his writing is probably the most creative out of anyone in the game right now. And they play so dynamically. It's amazing, like, just to watch a snare line. And I know they did this last year. Maybe they probably have something similar this year. where They just played, like, a three-bar triplet decrescendo. duck 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 and it was just went from loud to just all the way down to the bottom of the dynamic spectrum. I was like, man, that's just, it's easy notes, but it's hard to do at the same time and get eight or nine guys to play with the same touch all the way down to that low. You said a minute ago, they are the vibe they're giving off and everything and the energy level. They've always been notorious for that since Mike Jackson has taken that program over and that West coast, very performance oriented style. Um, I think they're, it's more this season than it's been in the past two. And I think there has been a decrease in clarity, potentially, because of all the extra motion going on with all the performance and aggression. I love all that. 
but there might be a fine line that you can't cross over based on the or attention to detail this activity requires to play perfectly together and balanced and stuff. The more and more aggressive you get and hype and crazy you get when you perform, the harder it is to stay consistent and play together. Do you think maybe that vibe being a little more over the top than the past seasons as if it might be something it definitely could um i don't want to that's see such it. a hard thing to judge though just because i guess person to person like no two people are going to perform the same way or feel yeah. music the same way I, and I what's what's maybe like overboard for one person may be like really subdued for another even though they look about yeah. the same but i think that just really boils down to sticking to your approach if that's what you, if that's which is what they've done the last two seasons. That's what you're going to go with in that vibe and that sort of like performance and really getting into it. You just have to, you can't abandon it like halfway through. You just have to For stick sure. with it. Like if halfway through the season they were like, ah, we're not as clean this point in the year as we were last year. So Maybe we should chop back. And they stopped. Then I don't think that they should, I, I don't think that's right. I think you should be like, no, we're going to No, I, I agree with that. I don't want to make it seem like I'm singling out the Blue Knights for performing too much or going after it too much because I'm not. Okay. They're not the only group doing that. Like, Blue Coats uh, yeah. have fallen victim to it a little bit uh, recently. Uh, just, I think there's multiple groups. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't people. want to just point the finger at one person and say, you're overhyping too much, so you're playing dirtier. Like, <laughs> no, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just, I was just raising a point to kind of like, I think it does affect it, though. It can, definitely. Like, if you're going crazy with the upper body, like, it's going to affect, especially because they play so much space yes. in their books. They have incredible amounts of space. And if you're letting your performance and, like, upper body movement, it could definitely affect, like, timing for when you're, when you're hitting, when you're attacking. So, it could, yeah. definitely. All right. Next would be a group who's... I feel like has struggled to find their percussion identity since Rennick left after O or 2010. The Phantom Regiment. Yeah. They've had a lot of staff changes. I feel like they're, they've just been going all over the place with stylistically what they want to do, who they are since Rennick left. It's Rob Ferguson's in charge now, right? Yes. It was Brett Kuhn. That was the two years before this one, I think. I believe so. Rennick left in 2010, which obviously is a tall order to try to. Those, those are big shoes to fill for anyone. Yeah, because he hasn't. He obviously is, has a lot of success. He has a lot of kids from North Texas. He won them him. three drum trophies in the past five, five years prior to yeah, leaving. Yeah, six oh eight in 2010. So that's a hard one. I, I can't remember the timeline in there from like 2011 to now, but I know Brett Kim was there for a little bit. Rob Ferguson, I think, is in this his, is first, his first, season, first season. First uh, season. There, but yeah, it's just kind of shifted around a little bit and I think just speaking from an overall perspective the thing about Phantom the most for me was they're playing music from a bunch of arrangers that I absolutely love the Russian literature like I think it's like Shostakovich and Rachmaninoff and Tchaikovsky and stuff like that Um, I don't know if they're using all those at least some of them but I love that like dark Russian composers but when I saw the show I was just very like eh see I haven't seen the show yet I can't really comment on the show itself, or I've only actually you've you've seen their drumline or percussion section more than I have. I've seen one video and it wasn't bad. They play they play really well, and they play the notes that they're given really well. I just don't know how much I like it or how much. I don't know. Like you said, I, it just kind of is weird because when I think of Phantom, like I just remember watching in person the O seven O six. Phantom Regiment drum lines and just being like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. They were really good. And it's just not that anymore. So I feel like I'm still trying to like compare the Apples two. Apples to oranges there. Yeah, and there it's just not. So uh, moving past that, uh, one of my previous cores, the Blue Stars, Mr. Eric Shriver and his tasty smooth tuning of those snare drums. I don't know if he still tunes them, but I guarantee if they didn't sound like they did, he would step in and yeah alter those things. Those guys' drums sound phenomenal. Yeah, I texted Adam Norris, who's obviously you know Adam, but yeah. Adam's a friend of oh. ours and March Rhythm X with us. But he's the tenor tech there, one of them at least. Uh, I think Anya's also teaching there. But Anya's at the Blue Knights. I think Anya's at Blue Stars. Really? I think so. 
so many blue drum chords. Yeah. You can't, there's like six of them in the top six. Like can't keep track. But so Anya was at Blue Nights at one point, but I'm pretty sure he's teaching Blue Stars right now. But I texted Adam. I was like, man, your all's drums sound so good. Just the whole <laughs> battery. Yeah. All they around. The sound blends so well. And they're getting that West Coast influence from the Pulse guys. And Shriver's writing the drum beats, right? Shriver is now composing. I think he has done a phenomenal job writing a great book for those kids. I think what I've heard is they're really young. They look young in videos. But they are playing really well. They look pretty they're young. A, their approach is definitely like a West Coast approach. Um, good sound quality. Maybe a little more thin than what I'm used to as an East Coast Midwest well, that's Shriver's mo. He Player. is he is a having learned from him for a summer. He's very much about sound quality when you hit the drum. I think like, everybody should be about sound quality. Well, you when should you hit the be, drum. but but I mean, I understand it's a it's a little bit different touch. Yeah, yeah, and something he did, he had us do that I had never thought to do and had never been asked to do uh, during spring training. We drummed on concrete, so like when we had an old pair of sticks that we were done using for on the drums for rehearsal itself, we'd have subsectionals after lunch, and we would spend the first hour just playing on concrete with an old pair of sticks. And when you do that, you feel if the stick is vibrating or not. You feel if you're squeezing after an accent to get a tap. You feel everything. And then when you get back on a drum, your hands feel so open and relaxed, and you're so much more in tune and sensitive to to the sound you're producing and how you're hitting that drum. And that's something that that was probably one of the most beneficial things that I was, I was made to do that whole summer. And it made me so much better. And I think that might, it's pretty neat. Yeah. I never thought to do that. Like the first time we did it, I was like, what we're going to, we're going to grid on concrete. We're going to sit on these bleachers and just play on this concrete. And I was skeptical at first. And then we started doing it. And then we, we'd get back on the snare drums and we're just like, Oh my God. We were just, our ears were open. You can you you can hear the pitch of the sticks. Not only can you hear feel them vibrate every time you hit the concrete, you can hear the pitch coming off the sticks, and so you can hear to play with guys next to you better, and you can hear whether you're overbalancing or underbalancing really well. It's something that I'll have kids do forever in lines that I teach. At this point, it, it was so beneficial. Get out your old sticks. We're playing on the ground. Yep. That's Sit cool. down, boys. And that's girls. how I like playing on. I guess concrete and wood because it's also it's so articulate and so dry mm-hmm. that you just forces you to hear everything. It's extremely beneficial. I think that's. I don't know if he still has them do that. Being a caption head versus a snare tech, I don't know who are the snare techs there this summer. Do you know? No clue. I think Jason is working there. Slade, Slade, Slade Salad fingers. Salad fingers. <laughs> do they call him that just because his fingers are really long? I like, don't know. Aaron Bailey called him that last time I was hanging out with him. I don't. The hell is this? Who the hell is Salad Fingers? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Uh, um, next, we've got the Crossmen, who I think have been slowly but surely progressing every year since yeah. Josh Bricky took over. Josh is there, Andrew. and Andrew is writing everything for the core. So the what? Yeah, Andrew writes the horn book. So and Andrew Markworth writes horn book, front ensemble, battery, guard yeah. work. No, he's not writing the guard work. <laughs> Sheldon is writing the guard work. But, yeah, Andrew's writing everything. That's cool. I didn't know that. So, yeah, Andrew is writing everything. And, obviously, Josh Bricky is there and a bunch of really good friends of ours. Jared Thomas. I think Jared Quartz is teaching the bass drums. Yeah, he has since Josh has gotten there. And then I'm not sure who's teaching the snares and stuff and the quads. I think Aaron told me that there's an old, a more recent Rhythm X age out. There's one of the snare techs, I think, there. But, yeah, I mean, they're drumming really well. I, I love the technique. I think it's very uniform. They're getting good sound quality. Yeah. I think that everything that they're being asked to do is extremely appropriate for their kids. Like, the book is written hard, but it's not, like, overly hard to where it's not going to be something that they could never achieve consistently and play very, very well. But it's hard enough to still challenge the talent level of member they have. And to compete. Yeah. Yes, and I really think that that's smart. They've designed well for those kids. Um, yeah, they play well. I've been. It's been cool to watch that. To watch Josh and Josh and friends slowly but surely progress that program and improve it. And I think because how good you're going to be, like staff is important. Yeah, having this good, educated, talented staff is important. But at the end of the day, the talent level of your members 
and the experience level in your members is going to put, a, I feel like, a ceiling potentially on mm-hmm. how good you really can get. If you've got, I mean, just it makes sense. BD's one of the best every season because all those guys are 20 years old plus usually. Yeah. And so I think even despite having younger kids potentially that March Crossman versus the older kids that March Blue Devils, as they've still been able to improve and increase their product every year, he will start attracting ta- more and more talented ch- kids to then even further push that program up upwards. And I think they've had more people come back this year uh, as vets than just like March Crossman and like go try to march somewhere else. Yeah, I think they got they've one year of experience, more. time to go try for Blue Coats or, yeah. or Cavaliers or whatever. So I think they had more vets come back, which is a good sign That's of having important. a good staff that ha- gives the kids in the core a good experience. It makes it fun for them while also being successful and having a staff that is consistent year to year. It it makes a big deal, man. Yeah, it's important. All right, this next one I have not seen at all. I've seen, like, Academy. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's who's on the next Yeah, they finished 11th last year at finals. I haven't seen a single thing from them yet. I have seen their show on the live stream, and that's about it. Who do you think? It's kind of similar to last year. Last year they did that Drum Corps Bride show, and where it was kind of a niche, cheesy, but fun show. Wait, wait. Drum Corpse Bride? Yeah. Like a play on words with core? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's a fun show they did last they year. Did there. And this year, it's kind of another sort of goofy, cheesy, silly show. It's called something like Buy a Hair, and there's like bunnies and stuff. So I think they've kind of lost me there a little bit. Yeah. But I don't... I haven't seen much of them to really compare year to year. They had a good year last year, but I don't know how good... I don't know how good they're doing. I know that they got beat by mandarins and drums, I believe, a couple nights ago, which good the, for the mandarins. mandarins have quite, either go ahead. Either the mandarins are like have really stepped up their game because academy was pretty good last year, and mandarins have are on the rise, or C- academy slipped up some. So I'm not really sure where that. Yeah, where I'm not familiar called. enough with that dynamic to to comment too much. Me but I didn't know they finished 11th last year, so good for them. Yeah, uh, was that the first time they made finals? I don't think re- it was a f- uh, in recent history. I'm not sure on that. Eh, whatever. I don't know. Um, somebody feel free to post a comment on the video and inform us where, yeah, whether if where. this was the first time the Academy was in finals in recent history or not. Um, all right, this last one, not the last one, but the next one, got a couple more left before we close this one out, is Boston Crusaders. Now, these guys, all right, so for those of you who don't know, we, we mentioned earlier when we talked about the cadets, Tom Monks is back there. Yes. Which I think is great. Now... Colin McNutt had been at the Cadets for a while, for a handful of years. Since about 08, I think. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, so since then, basically the entire Cadet staff went to Boston. Uh, percussion staff, excuse me, went to Boston. Correct. And if it's funny, if you watch Boston Crusaders this year, it's literally Cadets in Boston uniforms. Or the Cadets we've known for the past six years in Boston Crusaders New Age uniforms. Boston, I have a safe prediction that they probably will not finish in 12th this year. No. Um. <laughs> yeah, they had a lot of staff changes. Like, So they have Crown's former Viz staff and guard staff. And drill designer. And, and drill, drill designer writer. and writer. You have the percussion staff from the cadets for the past so many years. Uh, is the horn staff the same? The horn staff is from cadets also. Part part of it. Gino, okay, so like, I think his name is Gino. Came. So they basically took crown. Hasn't that Gino guy been at the cadets forever? Yeah, that's crazy. He left. I wonder what happened. I think I don't know if he left or if he had not been at the cadets. I'm not sure exactly on that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, he he did taught teach at cadets, so I don't know if he made like the direct switch or if he had taken a break and then when he came back he decided to go to Boston. Either way, they have a bunch of cadets and crown staff mixture. So they got the staff formula working for them. And actually, I saw them on Wednesday live. Um, I was in Lexington and they were rehearsing there. They were just doing some like, kind of like lot warm up style drumming through show chunks and uh-huh. exercises, working on beats, and they are playing some aggressive writing, and I think it's in the next few years it's only going to really help them. Obviously, Colin's a big name, drawing people to there. Um, they play pretty well. I think they'll finish top ten in drums for sure, uh, maybe even better. We'll see. But I think overall the core will probably be pretty pretty high. I think the show's a fun one. 
called like Wicked Games, and it's very like dark and aggressive. And I was actually talking to my friend Herbert, who's in the guard. He's the guard caption head, I guess now or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. And obviously he was at Crown. I was like, man, did you guys have many of the people that you taught at Crown follow you over here? And he was like, yeah, man, I was really surprised. He's like, I think I ended up having eighteen guard members from Crown follow me. I was like, that's crazy. That's a lot. That's how you know you're doing a good job as a staff member on tour if you switch cores and you have a good number of your kids jump ship for you for you t- to march for you no matter where you went it says a lot as an educator and a teacher because boston sure. is a lesser core historically finished placement wise than crown in recent history well yeah I mean, especially got, compared to last year to this year yes yeah, you got like girls competing for a gold medal that followed your staff to, to boston who's been finished 12th last year yeah Go from like a meddling core, like a, a a winning core, to someone that barely made finals because their staff member went there. Like that's insane to me. Yeah. To make that jump. More power to them though. Yeah. Yeah, I think Boston's gonna have a very good year overall compared to the last couple. These um, next few, I'll kind of run through because I haven't seen much. So kind of round out our list. We got scouts, troopers, spirits, and colts. Scouts. I haven't really seen much. Obviously, they've gone full in on the uniform gig. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. What the hell is happening? I mean, I don't mean, like, what's happening overall. I just mean, what were they thinking? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it's not my thing. I'm sure there are people out there that are like, yeah, at least they went all in for it. Like, they went they go, went for it. Go but, big or go home. Yeah, exactly. But if it... If it pays off for them, then I guess good because they missed out on finals last year. So I know they're trying to fight to get back in. Um, I haven't really seen much of their drumline at all. No, I haven't. Is James Farling still running it? I believe so. Still James is still there. Uh, our friend Aaron Ferris is te- one of the base techs, isn't he? Yes. I don't know anybody else that's on staff there off the top of my head. I don't either. Not, not off the top. No. But. And then we got Troopers, who have a heavy influence of... Vanguard Jr. Vanguard and Paul Rennick, because a lot of his former regiment slash Vanguard players teach and write there. I think he may write the book. He does write the book. Uh, he writes the book, and the caption head is a girl named Lauren Teal. Oh, yeah. She, she was, was in was Phantom's in Pit, I think. Phantom's Pit. She went to North Texas, as far as I know. Uh, yeah. So it's basically like... They play similar... They play basically the same style technique and arranging as... Rennick is so smart. He might have just set up a feeder core for Vanguard for himself. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, BD has BDB, and right now Vanguard may have Troopers, which is a Division One world-class drum corps uh, with a really good drum line. They play very smart. They play very clean. The book isn't super challenging, They're in my another opinion. group that's doing kind of, I think, what Crossmen are doing. They're writing a book that is hard enough to be competitive, but it's not too hard to where it's or too easy to where it doesn't challenge or it challenges the members enough. Correct. I think, I think they pick their spot on difficulty, and they've been doing that for, for the past few years very well. Yes, correct. I would agree with that. Uh, then we had Spirit, which I've only seen one little tidbit of Spirit, but my immediate reaction was, this is way better than they were last year. So that's, that's good cool. for them. And that's really all I have on that. If you're making improvements year to year, you're doing the right thing. All right, the last one we're going to talk about before we do drum trophy predictions, Colts. Now, they're another group, I feel like, that has been, like, trying to find an identity as a progression section. I don't know how many staff changes they've been going through. I could be totally wrong. Like, if we say something that is blatantly wrong about a staff change, just call us out in the comments. Yeah, just we'll, be like, we'll hey, own it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not, we're humans. We have memories that aren't perfect all the time. Uh, but I don't know, do you know who's running the Colts right now? Do you know anybody on staff there? Nope. Okay. I think Benji Broad teaches the bass drums. That's all I know. Why do I know that name? Uh, March Blue Coats and Rhythm X. That's why I know that name. I think he marched Blue Coats. Maybe he marched Blue Stars. March a blue group. I can't keep it. I know he was in Rhythm X. But he was in Rhythm X. dude with the beard? Yes. Okay, I know who that is. And I I don't know if he still is, but Oliver Delato was teaching there, the snare drums at one point. I don't, I think he taught last year. I'm not sure if he's on board there I will always think of Ollie as a little boy. <laughs> that's I remember... because the first time I ever met him he was like marching when he was like 15 years yeah. old or something alright well so the reason I wanted to talk about the Colts don't rip off another group like they're literally doing Flam Jam 
like verbatim the add in the same stick trick type add in stuff that the blue coats are doing. Like this isn't me crapping on them, but why would you do that? Because it's yeah, it's immediately going to be compared to the blue coats. Exactly. Like you see that and you're like, oh, the blue coats do this, but they do it. Not doing it as well. Yeah, like I don't know why. <laughs> You immediately want to have that comparison right off the. I, I the whole exercises thing is absolutely blowing my yeah, mind. Yeah, I want to the, talk about that. The exercise epidemic is what I'm going to call it. The show is, before the show is getting out of hand, ladies and gentlemen. The show before the show. Well, people just aren't playing practical things to actually warm up your hands, and more importantly, warm up like your ears and your sound. Mm-hmm. It's like the show is almost the warm ups have become like a big way to recruit people. Like, oh, let's play the coolest stuff so we can get people to come They've play become here. become lot tunes instead of warm-ups. And I'm cool with making your exercises sound cool. Like, yeah. That's totally fine. Make them practical. A groovy accent tap is fun to listen to. Well, but something I want to point out is my top three drum lines right now are in no specific order Cadets, Crown, and Vanguard. Those are my three front runners right now. And... Look at their exercise packets. It's pretty stock or close to what a stock exercise would be. They're not worrying about playing something cool or funky, and that's fine to have like a lot tune you play after you warm up before you get into show music. That's cool with me. I did that for a summer. It's fine. It's a lot of fun. But they're being practical with it. Crown Cadets and Vanguard. Like I think Rennick has them play just stock eight on a hand, decrescendo crescendo, and they do it perfectly. And it, 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 it all applies. It's all based on the skill set required to play their show music well. And those three groups are the top three right now in my mind. Yeah. I mean, agreed. Then you have groups like, like, uh, like I, I think the Bluecoats pioneered that whole show before the show thing and treat it less like a warm up and more like a performance before you go do your actual show. And I don't know. Yeah, that'll be a good one to talk about, too, some more when we get Aaron with us next week uh, and kind of pick his brain about it. Because warm-ups should serve a few simple purposes. Obviously, to warm up your hands, loosen up, and kind of get ready, loose to play the show music. Two, warm up your ears. It should be super practical. Like, Vanguard plays perfect eight on a hand crescendo de crescendos and they can hear the entire line balance from high end to low end and they have that crystal clear clarity planted in their brain to where when you play something in your show you're going to be able to hear whether or not it was immaculate or not because you just compare it to what you already have yeah you're right so that's our that's our initial impressions yeah, I think we've, obviously, there's groups that we left off, but I haven't seen any, I don't think yeah, I've seen the other ones. We got towards the bottom of our list. And there's other, I mean, there's obviously We different. knew less and said seen less, but we'll see more as the summer goes on. But before we close this one out, I want to do predictions. And we'll come back to this once the DCI season's over and see if we were right. But I said a minute ago, my okay. top three groups right now, from, and now, obviously, I'm not a front ensemble guy. I don't know a whole lot about it. I, I can tell if rhythms are together. I can tell you hear when people play wrong notes. But the real intricate part of it, I'm oblivious to. I think you might know a little bit more than me, than I do with regard to that. So we're I, I'm coming from a place of the drum lines. And obviously, like we said, Cavies might have won drums at the premiere show because their front is usually phenomenal. Uh, so my top three drum lines, Cadets, Crown, and Vanguard. If I had to, put, I had to rank them, I'd put, actually, that was the order. Uh, I put I put Cadets as my, my top one right now. Crown is my second, and probably Vanguard is my third. Um, probably with BD as a fourth. So is that what you think will happen, or what you want to? This happen? is or what, what this is what I like right now. Okay. And then I think the Cadets are going to win a drum trophy. I think Tom's back his first year back at the Cadets. His writing is on point. Those kids are playing their nuts off. I, I think the Cadets win a drum trophy this year. I feel like with the political side of DCI, there's almost no way that BD ends up outside of the top three. No, I said a sec- I, I, uh, I think I said a second ago, BD is actually my number four right now. They're good. I mean, they're always good. My but, top three would be 
in order, probably Vanguard, Cadets, Crown. You think Vanguard's the best? I think overall. And the reason I say that too is because I've seen the most of them, like not even just as a drum line, but as like a full ensemble. There's a lot of videos of them with like the full percussion section, mm-hmm. and their pit is smoking too. Really? Uh, so I think Vanguard's probably my number one right now, and then I would put Cadets Crown. Yeah. We may have, we may have to do like an updated prediction, like after the first regional, after like the first regional or something, or like yeah, I don't want to just flip flop the whole season, but we'll 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 revisit that. I mean, I saw maybe like I saw videos through. during spring training. Yeah, of cadets. I saw videos early season so far. I think those dudes are gonna win drum trophy. They could. They're they haven't. Uh, they won in two thousand thirteen. Yeah, was if crown won, I'd be. I mean, I'd be. Of course, I'd be happy. I want blue coats to finally win a drum trophy. Yeah, either one of them but, to get get one. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it. But It'd be cool yeah, to see. so that's that. That's the end. Of, we're gonna wrap this one up here. Um, if you obviously like, we always well, not always. This is number two. But like we said last week, feel free to. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash aged out podcast and follow us on Twitter at aged out podcast. And then also we're going to start potentially doing like a question and answer type thing. Oh yeah. If there's so, things that people want us to talk about or answer questions to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you have any a question you'd like us to address on an episode here, uh, email it to us at uh, aged out podcast at gmail.com. Yep, and we will put the a link to the Facebook page, Twitter account, and the email address in the video info for all of our all of our podcast videos on YouTube at this point. And obviously, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, I don't need to tell you where that is because you're listening to this right now on our page. So yeah, let's uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace.